There are two towers at the remote site of the Northern Utah Web SDR, the earliest of which may have been built as long ago as 1973. This tower, and its twin, which fell due to a failed guying in around 2006, appear to have been used until the mid-late 1980s, at which point the contract requiring their use seems to have ended. A newer antenna, a 94-foot-tall omnidirectional log periodic, was installed in October 1993 to be used with the Chirp Center transmitter, and it seems to have been used until around 2008, at which point it too fell into disuse when funding stopped. At this point, the site was abandoned, left to the ravages of time and weather. About 10 years later, in early 2018, the Northern Utah Web SDR was established. At first, the only antenna being used was the 3 to 30 megahertz omnidirectional array. At that time, the large east-pointing log periodic beam, a high-gain now U.S. antenna products, LP-1002 was unused, the vertical segment of the feed line having been cut sometime in the past and left laying on the ground, while the whereabouts of the portion going to the building are still unknown. Upon inspection, it was noticed that the dead man for the North Sky wire had failed, leaving all three of its lines slack. This issue is immediately addressed, and over the next two years, new sets of guy anchors using thick wall well casing were installed at the other two points to keep the tower upright. It wasn't until April 2020 that the beam antenna and its server, WebSDR No. 4, were brought online using temporary connections to the antenna and with the feed lines just laying atop the ground. In November that year, a trench was opened and six runs of CATV hardline were buried, permanently connecting this antenna. Things remained in that state until June of 2022, when a 110-foot boom lift became available for our use, on the condition that some electrical and minor mechanical issues be resolved. After this, we made good use of it to perform badly needed maintenance on those elements that were out of our easy reach. The first order of business was to replace the temporary connection that had been made to the antenna's feed. When the antenna was reconnected, it was discovered that a portion of the feed itself had disintegrated due to corrosion. So a kludge was done using the remains of the silver bullet from the original connector, wire, electrical tape, and stainless steel hose clamps. Since that repair, a proper 1 and 5 8 inch EIA to N flange was obtained, and with the aid of the lift, this connector, located at the 83 foot level, was installed on the nearest section of hardline that was in good condition, replacing the kludge. Another issue with the log periodic beam antenna was the condition of its insulators. The decades of exposure to weather and ultraviolet light had caused these fiberglass insulators to become quite fuzzy as the binding resin had eroded. The first order of business was to sand away as much of the fuzzy fiberglass material as possible, a very itchy and painstaking progress, requiring many hours in the air atop the lift, wearing breathing protection. With this done, another arduous task was undertaken, recoating the insulators. For this, a two-part epoxy paint was chosen specifically designed for the task at hand. Its consistency was thin enough that it flowed and wicked nicely into the fibers, binding them physically and penetrating into those areas that could not be easily accessed. During this application process, the ambient temperature was well above 95 degrees, requiring that this paint be kept on ice after it was mixed to maximize pot life. With this first coat applied, everything was sanded again requiring even more itchy hours in the heat, yielding a fairly nice, even surface. Three more coats of this epoxy were similarly applied over the course of two more weekends, but with the completion of this task, we were not yet done. This paint is, by itself, not rated for long-term UV exposure, so yet another coat needed to be applied. For this, some rather heavy gray pigmented polyester paint was used, its formulation being intended specifically to withstand direct exposure to the elements. Unlike the epoxy paint, which needed only a few hours between coats, this paint required 36 hours, causing the job to stretch across several weekends. This task completed, the insulators are once again protected long term, but a few more items needed to be addressed. There were a number of missing pieces of quarter-inch stainless hardware used to hold the feed lines in place that had to be replaced, 
and at the small end of the antenna, some damage to insulators, possibly from lightning strikes, had to be mitigated. Since we do not need this antenna to operate at its 50 kilowatt rating, a simpler repair using pigmented RTV sufficed. While the work on this antenna was the lion's share of our efforts during these weekends, it wasn't the only thing we did on site, but more about that in another video or two. Thanks for watching.